8 in the morning. So bloody early. Especially on a Saturday. I hadn't slept for nearly 26 hours, and I wouldn't have a chance to sleep again until tonight. I turned the U-Haul rental truck into the narrow entrance of the small apartment complex, nervous because I had never driven a truck like this before. It wasn't my first time moving, just my first time driving a rental truck. It was my first time going to Dead Men's Butte, a small town about an hour north of Las Vegas, Nevada, my new home. The Elmwood apartments were an older, smaller complex maybe 24 units total, and about half were one-bedroom, 600-square-foot apartments. My great-grandma used to live here before she passed, and my family still owned the apartment. I just had to pay the bills and the HOA, and I could live here as long as I needed. Last night had been an emergency midnight move. I owed my mom and my aunt big time. I'm done living with people. Specifically, my ex-boyfriend, Brandon. He had gone on a serious bender last night, which was normal for him, and terrified me when he got home. Brandon is an angry drunk, but won't believe me when I tell him. Alcohol becomes his excuse to become an asshole. Last night, for the first time, he became violent. Once he had passed out, I called my friends and my mom, got a U-Haul truck before they closed, and frantically packed everything I owned into the truck in the middle of the night, and I fled. Mom called my aunt, and my aunt told me about Great Grandma's old place. I double-checked the address and maneuvered the truck as close to the small apartment as I could. There was only one problem. Somebody had parallel parked a brand new red Ford Mustang with black racing stripes right where I needed to unload. Polished to perfection with not a speck of dirt on it, the new car registration paper was taped in the back window. Whoever owned that baby must live in the apartment next to my new place. I had to return the rental truck in a few hours to Vegas or I'd get charged for an extra day's rent. I'm on the clock. While my friends parked the car, I double parked the truck in back of the Mustang, temporarily blocking the road. Time to meet my neighbor. I shut off the truck, waved at my friends, and walked to the apartment next to mine. What am I nervous about? Who doesn't like getting woken up early on a Saturday morning and told to move their car? Pretty much everybody. I knocked on the door and waited. I knocked again. What do I do if nobody answers? I have to stay calm. My life has fallen apart. Please, whoever you are, answer the door. The sound came of a latch being undone, and then a deadbolt unclicking, and then the twisting of the door handle. The door opened wide. He obviously wasn't expecting visitors, and I wasn't expecting somebody so tantalizingly sexy. I unconsciously pushed up my glasses to get a better look. He was six foot two to my five foot ten, with chestnut, bad tasseled hair, amber eyes that he barely kept open, and a week's growth of beard covered his chin. The man wore only green plaid boxers that hung low on his hips. A little too low. A lean waist, a flat chiseled six pack, a strong chest, and defined arms. Life for newly single me had just gotten erotic. Would this gorgeous guy understand the problem I'm having? Hi, he croaked, offering a slight smile and showing off the small cute dimple in his cheek. As if I wasn't nervous already, I became more nervous. This gorgeous hunk was my neighbor. He'd never understand my problems, but I had to make him understand. I spoke fast, like some college freshman who had never been on a date. I'm David, a year away from my degree in interior design. I'm moving in next door, but your car, I mean, um, your Mustang, it's too big. I mean, I'll never fit it in. I mean, the moving truck, I can't park around it. Can you move it? I mean, your car. 
The words that came out of my mouth completely embarrassed me. If I couldn't understand what I had said, why would he? No wonder the man looked a little confused. I continued speaking, hoping to clear things up, but the words came out fast and jumbled. I only have a few hours to get everything moved, and an hour of that is taking the truck back to Vegas, so I have to hurry and get it done before my ex wakes up, and I've needed to leave him for a long time, but I've been too scared, and so I have to do it now, because he's passed out drunk, and when he's like this, he won't wake until noon or later. When he realizes I left, he'll get mean, and I want to be gone before that happens, so please, can you move the truck, I mean your car, I promise I'll make you dinner when I get my barbecue set up. His eyes widened, and he said, I won't pretend to understand, but I'll do anything for a free steak, David. Give me five. Name's Jasper. A few minutes later, he emerged in loose-fitting faded Levi 501s and a white wife beater and a faded green baseball cap. Jasper backed his Mustang into a parking stall in seconds, but on the third time I tried to back the truck into position so we could unload it, he walked over to me and said, Give me the keys. In seconds, he had the truck parked where the Mustang had been. Thanks, I said, a little embarrassed. I'm not used to accepting help, but I appreciate it. No problem, he said. I'd stay and help, but I have a conference at nine. I don't have anything else going on this evening, so I'll take you up on that dinner. Before I knew it, my mouth said, 6.30, okay? Barbecued T-bones all right? I'll pick them up from Mario's butcher shop when I return the truck. It won't be just us, because I need to say thanks to my friends as well. Not a problem, he said. And try to relax. Everything will be all right. Every time he smiled, his cute dimples showed. I watched Jasper go back into his unit, amazed that someone could actually be polite. Even more amazed that after the terrible night I had, I still stared at Jasper's butt as he walked back to his apartment. I am too tired and I am too pathetic. Jasper had been nice. When was the last time my ex spoke without putting me down or yelling at me? Lately, he yelled every day. Not any more. My aunt showed up with the keys and let me in. It was a small apartment with a kitchen, dining room slash living room, a small bedroom, and a bath that barely fit a bathtub. It had a utility closet out back and smelled of being closed off too long. The place was perfect. My aunt hugged me, told me that if I needed anything, just give her a call and I could hide out here as long as I needed, as long as I paid the bills. I didn't have as much stuff as I thought, so we had the truck unloaded in a lot less time than expected, including my desk, my barbecue, my sofa, coffee table, a bedroom side table, a stained glass lamp that my grandma had given me, my recliner, my philodendron, a big box filled with socks and underwear and various clothes, and about 20 boxes filled with junk. Notice anything missing? How about a flat screen? It didn't survive. A dining room table and chairs? Those were his. How about a bed? My ex was sleeping in the bed I had bought, but I wasn't going to wake him. He can keep the bed. Before we could even sort through the pile of boxes and furniture and clothes, I was back in the U-Haul and made the hour drive back to Vegas to drop off the truck and pick up my car, a 10-year-old silver mercury sable that once belonged to my mom. Dad died when I was five, and though mom has had boyfriends, she never remarried. On my way out of Vegas, mom had me stop by her apartment for lunch, and I swear she gave me $100 in groceries to help me get started. She also said, you and Brandon have been together for a year, so take some time to cool off, and then you two can work it out. He is a nice guy. No, Mom. Brandon isn't, I said. I'm done living with an angry, control freak drunk. Promise me you won't tell him where I went. What aren't you telling me, she asked. 
I showed her the recording I secretly made last night of Brandon ranting and screaming and throwing things at me, especially throwing a large lamp at me. It missed me, but hit the flat screen. The lamp hit the floor and shattered. Mom paled. I'll tell him you moved to Nebraska to live with your Uncle Simon, she said, and gave me a quick hug. Once I returned to the Butte, the barbecue was the first thing I set up, and while I waited for Jasper and my friends, I slow broiled the steaks while sorting through my stuff. A lot of the old stuff was old assignments, old clothes, and memorabilia from when I was a kid. Why had I kept any of this crap? In case I had to move quickly, again, it was time to streamline. A lot of this would go. As soon as I heard the roar of the Red Ford Mustang, I walked outside and waited for Jasper to get out of his car and off his phone. When he did, I said, Dinner's on the barbecue. T-Bones will be ready in about 30 minutes, and Corn on the Cob will be joining us shortly. For dessert, I've made individual cheesecakes. Blueberry topping all right? I'm going to like having you as a neighbor, he said. His smile was spontaneous and genuine, and he added, I'll bring the Michelob. About 20 minutes later, my two friends who had helped me move drove up. While they watched the barbecue, I searched through my clothes and boxes for something a little nicer to wear. Have you ever noticed that right after a move, you can't find anything? I settled for a pair of shorts and a black t-shirt that said, Clark County Fair, we grow them big and then we ride them. For those of you with dirty minds, they were referring to the rodeo. Call me crazy, but I like entering my baked goods in the fair and seeing what people thought. Last year, I had won second place for my dark chocolate chunk walnut pumpkin bread with vanilla bean cream cheese frosting. While I was looking for my sandals, my phone rang. One look at the caller ID made my stomach crawl. It was Brandon, my ex. Against all my better judgment, the fear took over, and I answered. Yes, I said. Where are you, he demanded. What do you want, I asked. Where's your stuff? Why is the flat screen broken? What did you do, he said. Oh, God, he'd been so drunk he didn't remember last night. The slight slur to his voice told me that Brandon had started drinking again. I took a deep breath and said, I'm not living with a drunk anymore. I've left. How dare you, he said. Who gave you permission? Shaking and terrified, I didn't say anything. I am not a drunk, he yelled so loud that I had to pull the phone away from my head. But if you don't come back home right now, so help me. A tiny bit of defiance burst through the fear. I never want to see you again, I yelled. And to answer your question, you broke the flat screen when you threw the lamp at me. You missed me but killed our television. We're through. Liar, I didn't do that, Brandon shouted. When I find you, I'll make you pay. How could he even find me? He couldn't. I'd never been to this town before, and it's an hour from Vegas. I'm safe. Unless I'm not. What if he had placed a tracking app on my phone? I hung up, turned my phone off, and then removed the battery. Track me now, jerk, I yelled. I tried to remain calm as I walked out to my friends. Jasper was with them. One of my friends asked, was that Brandon? I nodded. He's your ex? Jasper asked. I nodded. What happened? Jasper asked. He seemed nice enough when we started dating, I began. But once we moved in together, he changed. He became angry whenever I did something he didn't like and started drinking a lot. What didn't he like? Jasper asked. Last week, I bought a new shirt, I said. Brandon flipped out because he thought I spent too much. I told him that my new shirt cost less than one of his nights drinking. That started a fight. Jasper gave me an odd look and said, 
Angry drunks are normal people who keep their anger bottled up until they drink. Then their anger comes out at the first person or thing that gets in their way. It sounds like you were that person. I'm not going back to Brandon, I said. Trust me, it's better you stay far away, Jasper said. He took a swig of his beer and seemed to look inward. Was he regretting that a man with so much baggage had moved in next door? Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. One of my friends tossed me a beer and said, Sounds like you need a vacation. Good thing nothing ever happens in the Butte. The Butte, the unofficial nickname for Dead Man's Butte. I smiled back. With the beer, the steaks, good friends, and my new neighbor, I relaxed, and for the first time in months, I enjoyed myself. Since I didn't have a place for them to stay, my friends had to head back to Vegas. The party broke up about 10. Good thing, too. I'd been up for almost 40 hours. The next day, I took my phone to a local dealer and explained my situation. They checked the phone over, not finding a tracking device, but they did do a complete software wipe and for good measure, they rebooted the phone back to factory specifications. Any suspicious app was erased, but they saved my contacts and pictures. I called my former landlord back in Vegas to get my name off the lease. I'd sent him a bank check for the remainder owed, and I left my mom's place as my forwarding address. Good. Brandon can't track me, and now he's the only signer on the lease agreement. I called my boss at the restaurant I worked at, Lupita's Bar and Grill, and when I explained what had happened, he said he'd contact the Lupitas up here and see if I could transfer. In the meantime, I'd use up my vacation and sick leave. About a week later, I had my place put together, except for the bed. It was late afternoon, and I had just gotten out of the shower and wrapped a towel around me when my doorbell rang. My heart dropped. Had Brandon found me? He'd been calling and texting me daily for the last week, but I never responded. When I finally looked out front, I didn't see his truck, so I cautiously opened the door, wearing only the towel and nothing but the towel. I'm an idiot. Jasper's handsome face and casual smile greeted me. His eyes flickered across my body and then focused on my face. Sorry, I said. I was feeling a bit grimy because I was moving things all day. Nevada heat will do that to you, so I understand, he said, stepping inside. Since you had the barbecue last week, I figured it was my turn to take you out to dinner. The Butte has a great steakhouse. Want to go tonight? A date? Blurted out of my mouth. Yup, he said, peeking around the living room. Your place looks nice. Take me on the tour. It only took seconds to show off my little one bedroom. As an interior designer in training, I used every trick I knew to make the place feel larger, feel a little more comfortable, and just feel like home. I used warm colors, like a soft warm gray paint on the walls, with a warm white trim for the doors and baseboards. The lamps gave off a warm glow that made the place feel cozy and intimate. And I'd thrown an overly plush throw blanket atop to the boring beige couch to add some texture. A second deep forest green throw blanket lay casually on the warm brown leather recliner with a matching set of throw pillows. A large painting of a street in Italy was above the couch. I painted that myself, I said, back when I had to take basic art classes. Nice, Jasper said. There's no bed. Where do you sleep? Brandon can keep the thing, I said. Last I saw, he was drooling all over the mattress. Besides, the couch is really comfortable. Before we go to the steakhouse, he said, why don't you put on some pants and let's go bed shopping? After Jasper had left, and while I was getting dressed, my phone rang. Brandon, again. First off, I'm not a drunk, he said, but something about the way he spoke told me he'd been drinking. I might have had a little too much to drink, but everybody does. Second, you've had a week to settle down, so get back here. If you do it today, I'll forgive you for taking off. 
I'd had enough. A little scared and a little angry, I quickly sat down at my computer and sent an email attachment with a video I'd taken a week ago. Check your email, I said. I think you'll understand why I'll never come back to you. I stayed on the line as he looked at the video, listening to him become quiet. That was really me, he finally said, as the video ended. This isn't the first time you've acted like this after a bender, I said. Just the only time I recorded it. You've never been violent before, and I don't know why you started then. Brandon, you need help, but I'm not the man to do it. I don't have the strength or the patience. But I love you, he said. You've already started drinking today, haven't you? I asked. His silence was the only answer I needed. My heart broke, but I refused to give in to the emotions, and I said, Brandon, I am terrified of you. What if you'd attacked me? You know I can't stand up to you. What we had was good. Then it changed. I can't live with you anymore. It's over. Don't try to find me. Don't call me. Don't text me. Don't bother my friends, my mom, my job. It's over between us. I'm blocking you as soon as we end the call. I can change, he whined as I hung up. I felt sad and terrible and depressed, like I had betrayed him. But a tiny part of me was relieved that I didn't have to live in fear anymore. Once I was dressed, we drove in Jasper's red Mustang. He took me on a short tour of the Butte, including such scenic sights as Long Ridge Memorial Hospital, Railroad Junction Park, and the historic City Hall not to mention Java Dive, before we stopped at Sleepy Time Nevada, a mattress store. A twin mattress was fine for me, but Jasper had me look at everything, even full mattresses and queen mattresses, and really big king-size mattresses. Just because Brandon was a loser, he said, doesn't mean you have to live like a monk. As an exercise, and while the attendant watched, we both laid down on a queen-sized, high-end, pillow-top mattress, seeing how it felt laying beside each other. Jasper smiled at me. I smiled at Jasper. I was free. It had only been a week since leaving Brandon, but I couldn't stop wondering what it would be like to share a bed with Jasper. This mattress was the right size, but not the right price. The bed frame was also a little pricey, a flat black bed frame that held only a mattress with lots of room for under the bed storage. Unfortunately, the bed had to wait until a future payday. Moves have a way of being more expensive than planned, and though the transfer for my job had been approved, I didn't start for another week. As I lay next to Jasper, I started relaxing around him. His positivity, his beautiful smile, the cute dimple, the way he let me talk about my feelings made me trust him. I unconsciously snuggled into him and he placed an arm about me, letting me cuddle closer. This always annoyed Brandon, and I never understood why. Sometimes, I just wanted somebody to hold me, to love me, to appreciate me. Because my dad died when I was so young, maybe a part of my psyche is a little needy. I tried really hard to be a good partner. Someday, I wanted to find a husband. I love to cook just to see the joy on my man's face. I love to fix up a place because I want it to be not only my home, but his home too. Jasper held me as the sadness leaked out. It's okay, he whispered. Once at the steakhouse, I ordered a porterhouse steak, mashed potatoes and gravy, with a side salad and a side of holy hell chicken wings. Good God, what did they season those with? Those were burn your tongue out of your mouth kind of spicy. And they were good. Jasper ordered the same. The steakhouse had a dance floor, usually set up for line dancing with the occasional slow dance. After we ordered, we shuffled off to join a line dance. Line dancing is fun, 
It's not partner dancing. It's like it sounds. A group of people standing in a line and staying a couple feet away from each other. We do simple moves, following a leader, and all to a fun country rhythm. It didn't take long, and after only half a beer, before Jasper and I relaxed with each other, having fun with the dance, with the movements, with each other. The music changed after a couple of songs to something slow and intimate. Without thinking, I took hold of Jasper's waist, and he held mine, and we slowly moved close to each other. The warmth of his body, the smell of beer on his breath, the slight tang of his cologne reminded me of what love felt like. I missed that feeling. When was the last time I had felt that way with Brandon? Again, I snuggled into Jasper, feeling his arms pull me close. Suddenly, I realized that I had fallen out of love with Brandon months ago. The first time he had screamed at me. My crime? I had stepped in dog poop and accidentally made a tiny smear just inside the front door. Brandon didn't like dogs, so we could never have one. Relaxing in Jasper's arms, I laid my head on his shoulder, feeling the interplay of his strength under his shirt. He held me close as we barely danced. His breath was even and warm and soothing. And I finally, completely relaxed. So I whispered, Do you like dogs? Where did that come from? Jasper asked. Never mind, I whispered. Not exactly embarrassed. But... Jasper gave me that smile that showed off his dimple and softly said, It has to be a mutt. None of that boring pedigree stuff. And not too big. Had a big dog when I was a kid. Do you know how much poop a big dog has? You need a bulldozer to clean up after them. I smiled and said, You're exaggerating. They're not that bad. His smile and dimple were beautiful as he replied, You've never had to trim their toenails, and they need their own couch. Trust me, a medium-sized dog is better. 20-pounder, maybe 30 max. It had been a long, long time since I felt happy, since I had slow danced with anyone, since I surrendered myself enough to trust someone. Jasper placed a hand on my head, holding me tight to his shoulder, and he whispered, you're going to be okay. Those simple words woke the fear I had been suppressing since I had left Brandon, and the constant terror I felt that he would find me. I must have stiffened, because Jasper's arms were strong about me. Somehow, Jasper must have sensed the turmoil inside, and he whispered, You're safe. It might sound silly, because we had only met a week ago, but I believed him. It was crazy, but I confided in him my fears. I confided in him how terrible it was living with Brandon. I confided in him about being afraid I'd never find someone and living the rest of my life alone. He held me, and when the song ended, we went back to our booth, sitting next to each other and talking. I had been living with the fear for too long, and Jasper let me talk. Something leaked from my eyes, and I wiped the tears away with the back of my hand. If Jasper were to have any doubts about being with a crybaby like me, he would let them show now. Jasper placed a hand on mine and began to softly speak. My dad was just like Brandon. He'd come home drunk and angry. If he wasn't drunk, he would still get angry. I understand what you feel. The waitress brought our food, but Brandon and I barely noticed. By dessert, all barriers had disappeared between us. We shared a cherry pie a la mode, and we walked in the warm night air, arms about each other. Something about Jasper made me trust him. Could I love him someday? Was I in love with him now? The next morning, I got up early and made my award-winning 
dark chocolate chunk walnut pumpkin bread with vanilla bean cream cheese frosting and made the mistake of knocking on Jasper's door a little too early. He answered wearing nothing but his low slung boxers. God, he wore them low. Nope, I thought to myself, I'm right on time and made sure my eyes were looking at his. I just wanted to say thanks for talking last night, I said desperately trying not to stare at anything but his amber eyes. I knew I would like having you as a neighbor, Jasper said. Give me ten minutes and I'll come over to your place and we can share it. Or, I said, and took a swipe of the frosting and placed a dot of it on his nose. Jasper's eyebrows rose a little and he briefly smiled. I stood on my toes and kissed the frosting off his nose. Our first kiss. He closed his eyes, savoring the moment. Then he took a bit of frosting and wiped it on my lips. My heart raced. I closed my eyes. He kissed me and said, I'll be over in five. We dated every Saturday for the next six months, growing closer. Though we lived in our separate units, weekends, we were together. We often went to Railroad Junction Park just to watch the sunset, and I showed my gratitude by cooking for him. Then, one night, something happened I never expected. Maybe it was the beer or the sunset because we had been walking in the park. Or maybe being with Jasper made me happy but we talked and laughed and for the first time in months I felt excited as in that kind of excitement I have a surprise back at my place he said completely forgetting to hide his smile I focused on the dimple the cute dimple on the way back home I treated Jasper to frozen yogurt he ordered a raspberry yogurt with a caramel topping while well, I went with a white chocolate yogurt with strawberry mochi marshmallows. We fed each other with our little plastic spoons as the night sky deepened. After we walked home, he unlocked the door to his place and lifted me in his arms and carried me across the threshold. Jasper had planned something special for tonight. My excitement could not be contained. A dozen burgundy roses waited for me. Jasper set me down and handed the roses to me. He led me to the bedroom where he had champagne chilling. Surprise, he said, as he took a rose from the dozen and scattered its petals over the brand new bed and crisp linen sheets. It was the queen size pillow top mattress we had laid on weeks ago with a special black bed frame our new bed. He adjusted his phone and suddenly something soft and romantic played in the background. The air smelled of fresh roses and fresh linen. His gentle touch and soft kiss chased the last of my fear away. The softness of the sheets reminded me that there was more to life than living alone. The rose petals sprinkled about our bed told me that it was okay to love again and that Jasper loved me. That night, we celebrated with only the two of us. And when we finished our private um, uh, celebration, Jasper cuddled me close and whispered, let me protect you. Let me show you how amazing you are. I promise you'll never be alone and I won't let you be lonely. For better, for worse, whether we're rich or poor, in sickness, in health, you'll never have to be afraid. I will love and cherish you for the rest of my life. I want to make you as happy as you've made me. Would you do me the honor? I didn't know what to say as I started to cry. Jasper had just shown me how a real man cares for someone he loves. And I kissed him. While we lay in bed with only a sheet covering us, he slid a gold ring on my finger. 
I kissed him again and whispered, I love you. And the answer is yes. The end. I'm Gio, author and reader of this short piece. Thank you for finding my little channel. I hope you enjoyed this story because I enjoyed writing it. Please come back next Wednesday for another story about love. If you'd like more stories like this, please subscribe to my channel. Peace.